Hey everyone, this is George from YouTube channel Uncanny George, and today I'm doing an unboxing slash review video. The movie I'm going to be unboxing and reviewing today is this Captain America Civil War Blu-ray Steelbook Edition from Best Buy. So I'm back. I absolutely love this movie. I saw it in theaters, I actually saw it twice, and I really love this movie, and I'm so happy to finally own it. Now, I know there's different versions out there, but the one I really had my heart set on getting was this Steelbook Edition. Uh, the reason I wanted this Steelbook is because, one, it has this really awesome box art. As you can see, I mean, you saw in the unboxing. I really do like these Steelbook Editions more. I know they cost a little bit more. I actually got this at Best Buy. Regular prices are $29.99, and then they had like a $2 off, so it was like $27. It still ended up being about 30 bucks, which is kind of a lot, but I really do like these editions more. I just think they are really cool, and they're actually really hard to find. You're gonna think I'm really crazy, and my wife certainly did. I actually ended up going to Best Buy stores around San Marcos, Austin, New Braunfels. I even went to San Antonio trying to track one of these down. They were sold out and somehow I got lucky and I actually found him. And I'm just really happy because I really like this edition. And as for the movie, I love the movie. I really think Marvel outdid themselves. For me, this is the best Marvel film thus far. I have a lot of high hopes for Doctor Strange, but honestly, until we get to Avengers Infinity War, I just don't know if there's any Marvel film that can actually top this. Before I actually start reviewing the movie, I do want to warn that there are spoilers in this review. Again, they're spoilers, so if you haven't watched the movie, please watch the movie first and then come back and watch this. Um, if you don't mind spoilers, then we'll talk spoilers, but I do want to warn those people who haven't seen the film that there will be spoilers about the comics and the film. Uh, because I am a huge fan of the Marvel comic, so I will be shedding some light on that. Originally, the comic book storyline for Civil War uh, was a seven-issue miniseries. It was written by Mark Millar and illustrated by Steve McNiven, and I absolutely love this series. I gotta recommend, if you haven't read it, definitely check it out, because there are a lot of differences from the comics and this movie. So I'll just go ahead and give just a brief overview of the comic. There was a major kind of disaster level event that was sparked by the New Warriors. In the comic, the New Warriors are like a reality TV show of superheroes. This is part of the New Warriors reality show and they're going after people. This is just supposed to be something very easy. Well, they do kind of take down some of the villains, but then they go after a certain villain who is actually very powerful. He's actually a Captain Marvel villain. His name's Nitro. They go after Nitro and they actually kind of take him for granted. They just think that he's some sort of washed up villain. They really don't handle the situation very well. And what ends up happening is that Nitro, he not only destroys the city, but he also destroys a nearby school, killing everybody there. So what happens is that this is kind of the last straw and in the comics. The government's kind of like they've always had this uneasy alliance because basically superheroes are kind of like vigilantes and so in the comics uh, the united states government and the united nations shield they decide to initiate the superhero registration act and basically what they want to do is register superheroes to be superheroes and of course you have captain america on one side and you have iron man on the other they both agree that superheroes need to be reined in that they need to make sure that they're doing the best they can, they have the best training and such. But where they disagree is that Iron Man stands with the government and he wants the superheroes to register. Captain America is not pro-registration and I do side more with Captain America because I do see where Captain America is going with this because his argument 
is that they have to be apart from the government because then they just become tools of the government. Basically, like he says in the comic book, the government's going to tell them who the bad guys are. And so basically Captain America fears the corruption and the misuse of the heroes and in fact become a military force for the government. And this is something that Captain America just won't stand for. Captain America tends to have a lot of the street level heroes while Iron Man tends to have a lot of the more powerful heroes. Um, heroes who aren't necessarily afraid of revealing their identities and such. Well, as opposed to Captain America kind of deals with street level heroes who are usually the masked vigilantes, the masked heroes and such. And there's an interesting dynamic even in that. So obviously it's civil war, so these heroes are going against each other. And it's just a really great story. There's a lot of twists and turns in the comic book. And so I would advise you reading it, but basically it's hero against hero. And it eventually comes down to Captain America and Iron Man going against each other. And so this is just an incredible series. And after Avengers Age of Ultron, I didn't know if they were gonna do it, but after watching this movie, it makes perfect sense after Avengers Age of Ultron, that Civil War would be the follow-up movie to that. So in regards to this film, here's kind of the summary because it does differ from the comics. In this film, of course, there are a lot less heroes. In the comics, you have practically the whole Marvel Universe. In the film, you basically have everyone who's been on screen, minus Thor, Hulk, um, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., but you basically have the Avengers versus the Avengers. For Marvel not having access to all of its characters, I think Marvel did an incredible job with the characters that they do have. And so basically what causes this civil war in the movie is that obviously this is more of a real world setting. And in the real world, obviously, most likely, a lot of people wouldn't be okay with superheroes, masked men, going to other countries and basically running amok. We know that they're heroes. We know that they're trying to save people and help. Uh, but most likely in today's world with, you know, politics and such, it's kind of a weird, scary thing that these people are able to, with the abilities that they have, like the whole Thor, Captain America, to go around the country, to go to different countries and basically do what they will. Um, of course, they're on our side, but I guess that you can see as we don't have powers, it would be something to be afraid of also because regular people don't have these abilities. What happens is the Avengers are trying to capture Crossbones and he sets off a chain of events that leads to the destruction of another country's federal building and people do end up dying. And the blame for this ends up being placed on Scarlet Witch. And it also ends up leading into what's called the Accords, which are basically the Registration Act in the comics. And the heroes are again split down the middle. Of course, you have Captain America and you have Iron Man. They're at odds here. Cap, he understands that they are doing the best they can. And like he says in the movie, they are the best hands. They're not perfect, but at this time, they are the best ones there and they are doing their best. On the other hand, Iron Man, who I believe is also, I believe, shaken from the events of Avengers Age of Ultron and the fallout from that. And so he really is kind of unhinged a little bit. Iron Man is so driven to avoid something like this from happening again. He feels that the heroes do need to be supervised. He feels that they need somebody providing oversight to make sure they don't overstep like maybe he did in the previous film to prevent incidents like this. So ultimately, like the comics, they're gonna be at odds. The other thing that ends up happening is that there's a major terrorist attack against the United Nations and more people are killed. This kind of definitely pushes them over the edge that the accords are necessary. And this also brings in Black Panther, played by Chadwick Boseman. I will tell you, Black Panther's awesome, but we'll get some more of that later. And so eventually, okay, so the heroes are at odds. Iron Man has his team, Cap has his team. And so basically they do end up clashing and that's where we get Captain America Civil War. Now in regards to the film, again, I'm a huge Captain America fan. I do side with him, I'll just say that I'm pro Cap. I do see an Iron Man side, I do see his point of view. And I, do. I think in the film he's more sympathetic than he actually is in the comics. We know Tony Stark as Robert Downey Jr. has played him usually, which was with the devil may care attitude and such, but in this film you can see that he is shaken and it does bother him. The deaths really do bother him and he really does feel that this is the best solution, which does to me make him seem more sympathetic in this movie. Of course, there's no Thor clone in this movie, so he doesn't make those huge missteps like he does in the comics. So he is definitely more sympathetic in this film and I can see why people would want to side with him. So overall, this film is fantastic. There is a huge cast in this movie and the Rousseau brothers 
do an incredible job of balancing all of these characters. Every character really is given a moment to shine and I really love that about this film. And I was honestly really impressed by this. The other thing I was really impressed about this film is the story. This is obviously different from the comics. And I think one of the major differences in this film is that at the end of this film, Captain America is still alive. In the comics, at the very end of Civil War, Captain America is killed. And for me, that was one of the saddest things because I'm such a huge Captain America fan. But in regards to the story, it really makes that story so much more memorable. And it does cause Iron Man to rethink everything. The other thing I really liked about this film is that it is enjoyable. This is a very serious film. It's like The Winter Soldier. It deals with concepts and ideas that I think are more complex than just heroes beating each other up. And so I think this film also does an incredible job of balancing the serious with the humorous. There are a lot of jokes in this film. There are moments of levity that really bring up the movie and there's a perfect balance there between levity and seriousness and that's another thing that the Rousseau brothers can really take to their credit because they do such a great job of balancing everything. The other thing that's really great about this film is the other cast members. Of course you have Black Widow, you have Hawkeye, you have all of the other heroes we come to know and love but they also managed to throw in two bombshells. Not only do we get one character who's never been in a Marvel film before, we actually get another character who we've seen in other Marvel films, but not in this particular Marvel Cinematic Universe. And those characters I'm talking about, of course, are Black Panther and Spider-Man. And for me, these characters were awesome. I love Chadwick Boseman as the Black Panther. I think he's incredible and I really can't wait for the Black Panther movie. I'm so excited, especially after the after credit scene, that they're kind of leaning towards that Black Panther is going to be very important going forward. And of course, the other character is Spider-Man. We actually get Spider-Man in our Marvel Cinematic Universe with our Captain America with our Iron Man. The only thing more awesome than this would be if we could get the X-Men and Fantastic Four back at Marvel. I don't think that's going to happen. But Spider-Man as played by Tom Holland it's just awesome. I really like Andrew Garfield, Tobey Maguire. I really love those Spider-Man also. I think they're awesome. But for this film and this universe, you know, I think Tom Holland knocked out of the park and I'm a really big fan of his Spider-Man. So overall, Black Panther and Spider-Man were awesome in this movie. And there are a lot of standout performances here. I really love the Vision. I love Scarlet Witch. I love Hawkeye. Um, I love so many characters in this movie and the way they were portrayed, it was very interesting. And I thought it was, it was a good sign that the Marvel Cinematic Universe is in good hands going forward. Josh Whedon directed the first two Avengers films, and I love both of them, and I love Josh Whedon also. But I do think the movies are in good hands with the Rousseaus because the Rousseau brothers, they directed Captain America Winter Soldier, Captain America Civil War, and they're going to be directing the next Avengers films going forward. And so this film also really made me so excited for the new films because I felt that even though we don't have Josh Whedon, we have these guys and they are very awesome. And so I do think that the, the films are in good hands going forward. For those of you who are fans of special features, you'll definitely want to check this out because there are featurettes. Most of them primarily feature, of course, the story of uh, how Captain America Civil War came to be. There's a lot of interviews with the cast and crew. If you get a chance, you should pick up Captain America Civil War. If somehow you didn't see it in theaters and you're kind of on the fence about it, definitely pick it up. It's worth at least renting. I was so happy to get the still book edition. Uh, this is my favorite version of the movie, uh, but there are a lot of other versions out there. You can just pick them up anywhere. I did mention earlier that after Avengers Age of Ultron, I did see Civil War as being a very likely potential storyline. I just didn't really see how they could do it though when you compare the scope of the comic versus the scope of the film. Uh, but they definitely pulled it off and I thought it was very interesting because in those featurettes they do discuss those various things. One of the other featurettes that I found really interesting was the one about Doctor Strange's movie which comes out this November so I'm really excited for that one. Um, I'm a huge fan of Benedict Cumberbatch. I'm really excited to see what he does with the role. I think he's going to make a really awesome Doctor Strange. I really like that they're taking it very seriously. And in the featurette, you do get to see that they have gone all out for Doctor Strange. And they are throwing everything at it to try and make it as awesome as it can be. One of the interesting things that I kind of gleaned from the featurette is that Kevin Feige kind of mentions that there's going to be multiple villains. We do know that Mads Mikkelsen is playing probably the main um, antagonist in the film, but is it possible that we might actually get a glimpse at Dormammu? Uh, that would be really awesome. I think it's kind of early for that, but it would be really cool 
if by some chance Doctor Strange were to go up against Dormammu uh, this early on. I'm just really excited because I think Doctor Strange is going to be another really awesome Marvel film. The other special features also include a uh, feature that's specifically geared and talking about Iron Man and Captain America's stance on Civil War, how they came to their positions and why they did that. And it's really interesting. And I think that one's well worth checking out also. Uh, the other special features are the previews. Uh, there's there's about three or four previews on here. But if you like looking at trailers, there are a few trailers on here for you to check out. So overall, the special features are really good. I would say the highlight is Doctor Strange featurette. So definitely check that one out. Overall, I loved Captain America Civil War. It is one of my favorite movies ever. And I'm just really happy that I was able to pick up this uh, Steelbook edition. Um, it was really tough to get. And for me, I, I really was happy to get it because I really do like this box art quite a lot. So thanks for watching. I really appreciate your support. Um, if you like the video, please like, subscribe, comment. Let me know in the comments below what you thought about Captain America Civil War. And especially the ending. Did you want to see Captain America die? Did you not want to see Captain America die? Let me know in the comments below. And as always, thank you for watching.